Welcome. To begin, I'd like to acknowledge the First Nations and traditional owners of the land that we are broadcasting from, the Wurundjeri and Bunurong people of the Kulin Nation. And I pay my respects to their elders past and present and to the elders of the lands that this recording might reach. Um, today, I'm absolutely delighted to be talking to Sophie Laguna, one of my favorite novelists. Sophie was the winner of the 2015 uh, Miles Franklin Award. She was too young for 2005. She was hardly born then. The 2015 Miles Franklin Award for her second novel for adults, The Eye of the Sheep. Her other adult novels have been One Foot Wrong, The Choke, and most recently, Infinite Splendors. She's also written a number of acclaimed and award-winning children's books and, and picture books. Um, welcome, Sophie. Hey, thanks, Nick. <laughs> I, uh, it's an absolute delight to be talking to you. Um, I just think you get uh, better and, and, and better as a writer and every one of your novels, I just love more and more. So I, I'm gonna start our chat about the craft of writing, which is what this is about by asking you um, what you've learned in the past decade or so, uh, what has made you, in, you, you will say you're not a good writer, you're not a better writer, we know that, let's get past that. <laughs> in my view, you're a better writer, so no, what do you think has made you a, a better question. writer? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a great question. It's, it's, you're asking me, what do I feel I have learned in yes. the past 10 years about yeah, writing? Absolutely. Yeah, a lot, a lot, and I don't, I don't disagree with you that, um, that the writing is, is I hope I hope in maturing, yeah. It's obvious that it is. It, it is. I, I think I'm not saying that other books haven't um, haven't contained um, haven't contained the same. Uh, um, what's the word? Um, characters ha have equally um, characters are equally strong and 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 authentic. Or you know they they burn with the same energy, you know. And so you'll have to excuse me because now, so these questions ask me to find words for my process for for that which is intuitive and impossible to pin down. And sure. so, so I'm not going to be brilliant at, at doing. No, that. no, I, no. I'm, I'm going we will work together. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be I'm going to be fla floundering as I as I, I don't want to sound ever. Um, a vein or um or or anything like no, that no. yeah but so i'm going to be trying to find words for that which is that i don't naturally find words for no no and absolutely and i, and I will push you because i know yeah. i know i know you don't like to appear to you know yeah, yeah talk about I, your work I, in that way so i'm going to push yeah. you a little bit yeah so, so um so i can tell you of course that i'm learning about writing i mean how it'd be concerning though wouldn't it if by practice you're not learning. But can you specify, can you, specify. Can you pinpoint can some specify. of the things? Yeah. Less is more, less yes. is more. Yes. That yes. is a lesson that, um, that's the fundamental, that's one of the fundamental lessons that every almost, almost, let's say the vast majority of us need to continue to learn because I am still reading highly acclaimed novels of great, uh, excellent novels and novels that the world uh, acknowledges and celebrates and still, and still um, there are moments of overwriting where the writer um, will provide the seed in the sentence mm. and then it's the reader's job to do the blossoming. So all of my metaphors are going to be an attempt to, to address what I'm trying to say. The writer's job is almost just to provide each time the seed, the seed in the sentence, the reader does the rest. You put the seed, the reader does the rest. And there's a lot more room if the writer does less for the reader, which makes the, the experience on the other end, because it's a transaction between writer and reader, much more interesting and powerful because you've given them room to have their limitless, unpinnable, um, unconscious, much more interesting, much more layered, much more complex response because you haven't mistrusted the work and done it for them and which shrinks it down. It's overkill all the time. Repetition, unless you are really, really conscious of the power of repetition, then don't use it unless, unless, you're, using, unless you're using repetition like a, 
a, mo a motif. You're repeating, you're working very consciously with the power of repetition. In dialogue, if you are ever going to repeat a phrase in dialogue, <laughs> ask yourself, can I? And don't do it. Don't do it. You know, um, Daisy, come back. Come back. D uh, decide. Do you need the second comeback? Do you need the second Daisy? I mean, it's just every B-grade film, every B-grade film will commit this crime in ev almost every significant moment of dialogue. They cannot, they don't know how not to do it. And a great deal of fiction is also doing it. Mm. And it, is, it requires discipline, trust, and not, not getting caught up in your own um, trip, indulging in it at all. It's not your, it, you got, it's a discipline. It's all about uh, discipline and ear. I mean, when I say ear, it makes no sense because you don't hear it, but I'm talking about inner ear. So it's about less, less, less at the very same time. <laughs> so the whole process is completely contradictory. So at the same time that I'm saying less is more, there are whole sorts of areas where you must do more, mm. which means knowing more, you need to know more. The more you know, the less you need to do on top. So see how contradictory. Yeah, no, and you're, you're so right. I mean, what you pinpointed there, I'm so glad you pinpointed that because it is such a trait uh, of you. And, and, you know, when I'm teaching students, I often say the best writers, you look at what they write and every sentence is so simple and you go, I could write that sentence. I one after the other. My favourite Australian writers, yourself, uh, Christos Chalkers, Alex Miller. I look at when I'm reading. I look at the sentences, and I was doing that when I was reading Infinite Splendors, and they are such simple sentences. Like there's nothing complex. Those words. You're not trying to show that you know these words. And and this is one of the things. It's just the building up of these simple sentences with that stuff, as you say, that you know. That you know more of yeah. that makes it a great novel, but but too many writers try and make sentences too complex and use words are too good. Your sentences are so damn simple. But that's which just is my beautiful. style. But but Nick, but but, that, but, that, but great writers do that. But even but there's other writing which might be much more uh, le less penetrable and um, true, more complex of uh, set of words. You know, greater yeah. vocabulary, and and that's that can be. <laughs> That can be just as powerfully done. Of course. So, so um, I, I am, I also, you know, I am acknowledging what you're saying also. The, the reader has to, the writer, um, yeah, has to know more and has to have done the imagining adequately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Adequate, um, an adequate amount of, of the imagining, of the imagining. It's, it's a work of the imagination. So as long as you've done all the necessary imagining, um, yeah, then all, all, all yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's an important part. Well, spe speaking of the imagining, the next, the next question I've got and I'm really interested in, um, uh, and this could be dealt with in a second if, if I'm totally wrong. Um, I'm wondering how you deal with a new idea while you're still working on a current novel and, and if this is what has happened. Um, like, for instance, let's take Infinite Splendors. While you were working on the choke, did the idea for this come no. along or no. not? So you've never been in the position where your next one is coming along when you are yeah. working. Yes. Yeah. So what? So, so when I was how do you put it aside? Or well, what when do you I do? was editing this, um, but but I'm when you're editing, it's completely different, isn't yeah. it? It's yeah. It's eighty percent done. Yeah. Yeah. If it's eighty percent done, or or if you have the bones so safely down, then you're safe. Sure. To, to move away. Sure. And um, commit to to an equally important a work that's equally you know that takes your that that, that steals your attention. It's but still, are you thinking about? I mean, I can't imagine you're not thinking about the next one at all. Or you're just so so in this bubble with your not current not one. Not when you're in the critical work part. No, no way. No. Okay. No way at all. Would you be able to um, have the same level of um, interest or another work would not be compelling you in the same way if you're in that raw and formative stage of the work it takes absolutely every everything you have to create the world and to to do the to do the necessary right. work it's only when the vast bulk is down and understood and and safe and in other people's hands 
you know, either with publisher or already been through publisher and now with, you know, beyond, moved beyond its structural edit and is now, um, you know, even one step beyond, yeah. then you can um, become caught up, you know, swept away um, and, and caught up with another cast with an, okay. with an important and press it with an urgent, with an urgent, um, yeah, story to tell. I mean, Anthony, Anthony Yark, uh, uh, who taught novel at RMIT yeah. when I was there, I remember he said recently that that uh, the energy behind important books is is, is one of urgency. It, there's an urgency around important. It's as if the book had to be told. That's a lot of energy. Um, yeah, and that really can only really go one at a time. Okay, that's that, yeah, that, that's fascinating. I'm yeah. I'm not sure that is the case with with everybody, but 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 it does make such total sense yeah. that there's something wrong if you're not. Yeah. Yeah, but then I do put you know by the time it was eighty percent down, I was writing two other children's novels. Exactly, exactly. But, but not till then. Yeah. So, so that's a. Yeah. Speaking of children's novels, if you like, I mean, um, you've been asked this question, no doubt, many times, and you're probably sick of answering it. But yeah. for those watching this who are unfamiliar with your novels, you you write from a child's perspective. Why 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 did you choose to this? Why why do you continue to do it? What is it that you find so fascinating about that? I don't know that I find anything fascinating. It just happens. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I find anything fascinating that I'm conscious of. It just it's just natural. It's like saying, why do you make bolognese, um, you know, so well? Is it I mean, really to say wow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just wow. trying to think. I've so, asked you this question before. No, you I love you adults. Didn't, adults. You, didn't ask it, you didn't answer it adequately that time either. That was years ago. Now I'm answering, asking it again, and you tell me it's like making spaghetti bolognese. <laughs> Yeah. I'm a little bit tired. I'm a little bit tired. <laughs> that's all right. I need to lie down. So that's, a, that's all right. Okay, that's all so right. Um, I continue to do it, but I love adult characters as well. And for two thirds of Infinite Splendors, you know, he absolutely. Adult. And I met him as an adult man, and absolutely. he's always adult, and uh, his, his preoccupations are complex. Uh, so I think I like writing. I like characters, mm, mm. young characters. Um, why have they appealed to me? Maybe it's the, the very playful child in me mm -hmm. has a lot to mm -hmm. do and yeah. say. Yeah. And and had some critical and formative, you know, years of, of life, giving me a great deal of information, of, of, of material mm. that needs to be processed and worked with. So it's a perfect storm. But I like adult characters equally. Yeah, yeah, no, no, and and and, uh, and yeah. they are e equally as 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 good. Either the children grown up into adults, but also yeah. the adult characters in the children's life. Uh, yeah. They are just as rich and full. Yeah, I just, just the choice of protagonists. That's all. It's it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, I just happen to be someone who is aware of the impact of childhood. Uh, and if there is anyone out there yeah. who hasn't worked that one out, <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's why I get a little bit. You know, when, when I'm asked that question, like, why children? As if I'm talking about some alien species. <laughs> rather than why, you know, you might frame the question differently and say, why are you interested in writing in those early years of an, of an individual's life? I mean, isn't that self? Isn't in, that in fact, the way you put it makes me feel so silly for asking the question yeah, because, because you are so right. It is the formative years of anybody, isn't it? What, why, Sophie, are you interested in the early years of an individual's <laughs> life on planet Earth? Isn't it perplexing? Yeah. We must ask. We're going to gather a panel of professionals and experts to try and figure out why, as a writer, you're interested in the early years. It's 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 it, it's uh, mystifying. I think it's I think it's only because I'm trying I'm trying to dig bet, myself, I'm, being, I'm, I'm trying to dig myself out of a hole here. No, no, I think it's because uh, what, what writers do is is they they create this children's life for their adult characters they create the backstory they do all of that sort of stuff yeah. they have the knowledge but then they write about them as adults so they don't publicly put the that, that sort of that child's life there to have someone that's actually putting it out there is yeah. probably different yeah. yeah it is different isn't it mm. Mm. maybe nick is it 
is it that we as a, um, a, a is it that human beings um, is it the way we understand childhood is limited is it is it the way we 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 fail to I'm just throwing this out there is it, is it the way the majority of adults have dealt with their own childhoods and ch children in general and our understanding what it is to be uh, a child do we I, I don't I, look I guess it depends I mean Maybe. I think for a lot of people they just miss their childhood when they're adults because it was so much goddamn fun but then there's others for whom it was traumatic and they never want to go back there so I guess it depends um yeah yeah, just interesting. <laughs> well, uh, given given we've talking about children and characters and in, in, in infinite splendors, yeah. why why don't I ask you uh, to read uh, just a little bit from Infinite Splendor? Oh, again, right. shall I read Nick from when he's a child or an adult? Well, let, let, let's do. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me that, and I'm thinking I don't know what to answer when she asked me that. Let's yeah, do it from a child. Anything you want. Let's, anything you want. Uh, let's do it from a child. Yeah. Uh, um, I wonder if we just go from the very beginning. That'd be that'd be brilliant. Yeah, because yeah. then yeah, people let's, let's won't have to have anything explained. That's right, and then really? they'll go out and buy it. Sorry, that say that again, Nick. And they'll go out and buy it to find exactly. out what happens. Exactly. So, yeah, <laughs> chapter one, chapter one, <laughs> the splendors. Three, four, five. Paul counted from the porch. I stood in the middle of the yard. I'd hidden in the apple tree, Gert's shelter, by the trough, and the outhouse. I needed somewhere new. Seven, eight, nine. I looked to the bunker door lying against a slope in the grass opposite the outhouse. Fire will come again, Louise. It was, it was 50 years ago, but I'll never forget it. You make sure that bunker is dug out and ready. I ran down to the door and hooked my fingers through the iron handle. If there's a fire, Mrs Barry, we'll get out in the orchard trucks. I want the bunker door kept closed and the boys to stay away. I pulled as hard as I could. The door was wedged in its frame. 14, 15, Paul counted. I pulled again, but still the door didn't open. I'd miss my turn if Paul found me before 20. 16, 17. I pulled one more time, falling back into the grass as the door opened. I got to my feet. The bunker was filled with dirt almost to the top, almost. I lay against the shallow space, tilted at an angle by the slope in the grass. Then I brought the door down over me, spreading myself flat beneath it. Paul called out, 19, 20, coming ready or not. Then everything went quiet. I could hardly move underneath the door. Even my feet were flattened, pushed out to the side like flat man in the looms. I blinked in the darkness. My skin itched under my clothes. It would take Paul forever to find me. Or maybe he wouldn't find me at all. Maybe I'd be here for hours. Lucky mother wasn't home. I'd be in trouble if she knew. On Saturdays, Mother did the numbers at the dairy the same way she did Monday to Friday. If it weren't for Mrs Barry to keep an eye on us, Mother didn't know how she'd keep the wolf from the door. I couldn't hear Paul out there. How much time was passing? I took a deep breath, and as I breathed out, felt myself sinking into the spaces between the grains of dirt. The two temperatures, cooler underneath and warmer above, met in the middle. Everything grew still. Was this what it was like for the animals that lived underground? Um, I'm so glad now that you picked that. I remember, mm -hmm. God, I remember, so remember reading that bit because yeah. I, I was so, I was, I was shit scared for him. I mean, I, I thought, <laughs> from I, oh, for that, I thought, I thought he wasn't going to get out. I thought, oh my mm -hmm. God. And then I had to go, I think this is the protagonist. He's going to be all right. But I was like, I was like, oh, like, it was amazing. But, um, <laughs> But, but the, why I'm glad you read that out, it is the perfect example of the next question I wanted to ask you or, yeah. or to chat about because it's a beautiful example of it. And, and in my view, you're one of the best proponents of using just small conflict to keep a story ticking along, right? Mm -hmm. Every In all of your novels, there might be two or three really big events or, mm -hmm. or revelations, um, and there certainly are in this. But on every page, in every paragraph, and, and dare I say, even in every sentence, mm -hmm. there's just bits of conflict that keep the reader wanting to read on and, and wondering how mm -hmm. the main characters are going to cope. Now, do you put... The, the, What's an example in that one? Okay, so even, so a really bizarre example, maybe just yeah. my view of what conflict is, because conflict yeah. is conflict's not just necessarily... So when people think of conflict, they always think something bad. So when I define conflict, it's just a disturbance to the nat nat natural order. It's just something different. So right. even that sentence, yeah. and I've got a copy of the book here. So yeah. 
that sentence, and you may argue yeah. that it's not, but the description even, I ran down the door and hooked my fingers through the iron handle. Just that word, the action of hooking, is, is to me is an example of, in that sentence, that is conflict, because it's not what you would normally do. And like a writer would just say, you open the door, right? But the way you've done it, it's, you know, now obviously the bigger things are the things about fire, the thing about... The wolf from the door. The wolf in the door, but then even opening, having it, making it difficult to open something up and then not being able to open it up again. Yeah. All of that is little conflict. It has very little yeah. to do with the story, although it's sort of a bit yeah. like Chekhov's gun, but I won't go into that yeah. for later on. But um, those are, um, there's a there's hundred examples you just read yeah. out of small conflict. Well, that, it's really interesting you mention them because I've got thoughts as you're speaking about them because that's discipline as well. As the so that's what I want to ask you. Yeah. Are you doing that deliberately as you are writing or do you go back and put more stuff into... Sometimes really I'll go back. Yeah, okay. Because it, things can happen too easily. Mm. Mm. Um, if there's opportunity for things not to, to happen mm. easily, then you need to extend the moment adequately for its drama, but not too much. Yeah. So it has to be hard to get out, obviously. It's a, it's a rusty old thing and the Absolutely. door is sort of caught. And, exactly. and, of course, you cannot waste the opportunity. It can't be easy to step out. Well, I remember extending it, that it has to be like... Um, I just remember that it has to be harder to get out. And yeah, it wow. has to... Yeah, I, I remember that. That's that, you know, I have to have an adequate number of beats all the way along for how long it's going to take him to find the thing. How hard or easy is it to open the door in the first place? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Like, he's counting, he's counting, he's going to, ah, he, he get, gets open. Okay, he's in, he's in, it's door, door shut. He's, he's, he's having an experience. He's having um, a life-changing moment that, um, that, that is going to have effect, an effect on him for the rest of his life, right yeah. there in that bunker playing exactly. hide and seek. He experiences, in my view, for the first time, um, a truly meditative space. He, he, even uh, Okay, so even later on in the book, and again, and this isn't yeah. giving anyone anything away, but even later on when he's uh, working out how to buy paints and stuff, that's not easy. That's, not, that's exactly what I mean. Yeah. You know, um, less experienced writers, I guess, would just go, okay, he's going to get the paints and have them delivered. Yeah. That is conflict all the way. Every little bit of it is just beautiful. Well, you make beautiful. the mistake. Sometimes you make it easy. And then if you do the imagining, that's what happens. If you, if you do the imagining, um, it gets complex. And I can't remember how I did it or, or, or planned it or structured it or came up with it. It's frustrating because I can never explain anything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, how did it? Yeah, so he gets on the telephone, and he tries to call to call her. Now, how did I come up with the idea that well, calling calling her is too hard? Well, I suppose if you give someone um, a speech impediment, then any phone conversation is going to be sure. fraught. Sure. So I can't remember then when I made the plan that. Yeah, I, I think I understood early that, and this is all unconscious that the woman on the other end of the phone was going to be supportive, brisk in her manner, business-like, and efficient. But her, well, you yeah. just say supportive, that's understating him. So she was yeah. very brisk in that. But what she did for him, just I almost melted at, at her. I really, I just went, oh, my God, you're such a wonderful person. When you when you thought, thank you, thank you. Thank when she you. took matters in hand when and she said, oh, made the suggestion of what yeah. to do. Cash on delivery, send me that. Oh, my God, absolutely. It was like, oh. Well, she's, and he good. says charis to my thetus because there's some painting that was in that book yeah, yeah, of letters. Yeah. I, I need to know exactly what that painting was. It was a picture of charis speaking to thetus and thetus was trying to explain. Yeah. And so Lawrence understands that this woman is 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 a, is, a, is a listening and mm. and supporting mm. him. Yeah, okay. yeah, you're right. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She, she she was a good she good. Was such a good person. Just that one that one action completely uh, defined yeah. her character in yeah. a Did very she, deep way. Really yeah. You're making me really think about her now because yeah. I've never, in all the talks I've given uh, or speaking about the book, I've not spoken about Moira Parker. Because oh, right. there's a lot to speak about in the book. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot to speak about, but I've not spoken about Moira. <laughs> um, and she, you could almost argue, 
you wouldn't say she saved his life, but she was one of the, oh. of the maybe she did. If, if she says no, if she doesn't have that, um, yeah. uh, if, if she just gets frustrated and hangs up, yeah. it's a completely different direction. She's yeah. a good woman. She's, she's, a good she's woman. thorough yeah. and caring yeah. and she makes sure that he gets his pants yeah. for the next 27 years. Yeah. And if we didn't have her in the end, then the world would be um, a lesser place. And, because, yeah. and it goes to show that thing, you know, that people say about Chekhov, uh, there's no yeah. such thing as a small character. Like the minor characters have their lives, but they can also um, uh, act in such a way that has a huge influence on others. And that when you're writing or yeah. when you're acting, as you well know, know. You know, there is no such thing as a small character. And, and Chekhov yeah. is a great example of it. Yeah. But again, you use techniques, you know, that come exactly from Chekhov as well. That sort of, you know, Chekhov's gun type thing. There's a couple of instances Bagging in there, it. you know, that sort of stuff. It. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had the bunker. Yeah. I first came yeah. upon the bunker as an idea, the very first page, the very first day I began working. Wow, on it. wow. Yeah. The, I, okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't. Um, so you, when you start writing, you write. You start the first page and just go to the no, end. No, I or? started as an adult when he was an adult. No, you know, no, no. I'm just saying yeah. when you write a book, do you sit down to write and you you start writing the first the first sentence or the first no. page? No. How do you do? No. How do you do it's, it? It's much messier, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh. I'd love to just. <laughs> I thought that might be the case. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, you you just start anywhere. You you got to just start where you feel like starting. Okay. Because cool. otherwise you're never going to start at all. Because it's just going to look well for me. I have to go with the top layer of desire. Right. So I'm well, not going to find good. great words. I have to go with my first. What do I? The juicy bits that want to happen. Right. Yeah, and I write a lot of them first. A so lot. I'm I'm just. <laughs> it's a bizarre analogy. I'm just wondering. When you eat a meal, do you leave the best thing to last or eat it first? You, you probably eat it first. I'm, I'm wondering if there's a connection between how you eat a meal oh, and how you write a novel. Field. Sorry? <laughs> it's a novel. Okay, we won't go down there. <laughs> See, I would prefer, when I write, I prefer to get the... When I, when I write, I prefer to get the stuff I don't want to do out the way and then I've got the best things to come. It's a bit like when I'm having a meal, I eat all the stuff I'm not as good. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Um, <laughs> well, because I have to, because otherwise it, I'm gonna. It, um, I want the I want some fun down on the page, in order to give me the um, of course inclination to to get the other stuff down. And also because when I first begin, I don't know what the thing's going to be, so I just have to go with whatever I'm in the mood for, you know, whatever 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 um, is most urgent to say. So I should go find that notebook because it was um, handwritten notes in his voice um, just saying about a man who wanted to go down and be underground and keep and, and, and be in, in, yeah, be right. in the hole, be okay. under, the, under the ground, okay. yeah. You, you also, apart from the small conflict, you have an extraordinary understanding, and, and I'm not sure if this is conscious or unconscious, of both setting and time in all, in all of your, your novels, um, you know, when I read your books, I'm right there in that place and I'm right there at that time in history, whenever it is. Is this in um, intuitive? Is it down to extensive research? Is it is it both of these elements or is it, is it something Well, I'm else? actually, you know, I'm a learned professor oh. in many periods of history. <laughs> <laughs> you are, and children's books help with that because you do a lot of research. Very researched. Yeah, 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 yeah. Decades and decades immersed oh. in time. <laughs> You're like you're, you're, you're like a modern, uh, you know, you're like a Doctor Who, but you go back. And, you There's know. nothing I don't know, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm being silly. Okay, okay I'm, I'm being silly. I know, I know you are. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I've spent the, all of the decades of my life, like all of us, of absor absorbing story. And, and playing with ideas and, and, he, and reading and listening and, um, you know, and I'm just, I, I'm, it, it, it's intuitive. And then I'll go back and then I'll go back and um, e edit and correct and um, it's imagination. Mm. Mm. And, and, and having lived like, like we all have, it's just that writers have an interest in, in, um, you know, it's, it's a, you know, I suppose we're filters of sorts, aren't we, for everything we've, 
Well, okay, so okay, in terms of place, so again with infinite splendors, infinite, I don't know why to call it hmm. infinite memories, infinite splendors. Um, the mountain, I forgot hmm. its name. Were you Watts. familiar with? Thank you, and, and it is in itself a magnificent character. Yeah, loved yeah. What a lovely character. Lovely character. For the, did yeah. you? Were you? Uh, aware of it to a great extent before you wrote this or did you had did you go and stand in front of it for three months and look at it that yeah, yeah. but i couldn't stand for three months at no. a go because no. I, you know, I've got no. kids. No. i would have if i didn't have kids it probably would have <laughs> you know gone and like you know rented a room there for three months exactly. that's what you do if you're free yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> since yeah. i'm not free <laughs> <laughs> I had to just drive there and get three to five, you know, a few days whenever I okay. whenever I could. And right. the great thing about that, perhaps if I'd been free to spend three months there, it would have been a less um, powerful experience because each time I did go for three, four days, um, it was like being, um, it was like an altered state, I, you know. I, I, I was alone for a start and... Um, you know, it was like tripping all the time. You know, there there would be the mountain, there would be the Grampians. I would walk alone, immersed in nature. You know, so 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 the story would be alive in my mind. I was half. I, I existed between the between the real world and the world of the story. I was always by myself, completely swept up, mm. ecstasy. It, it 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 can be ecstatic. Sure. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, not not forever, not for extended periods of time, but for those periods of time, and uh, really exciting and and really wi uh, wild and free and playful and away from everything, and and I would climb and and I would take photos, not that many photos, um, but you know how it is when you're alone. So I remember going to the cemetery in Dunkeld at the base of um, Mount Sturgeon. And there's a beautiful old cemetery there. I never really used this idea, but I remember um, as, I was, as I was driving along, a huge um, uh, herd of kangaroos were bounding along beside me. There was the mountain in the background. Probably the sun was setting, casting its light. There would be th those kinds of experience. I can pick or choose what I put in the book, but you know, every animal I would see, every every cloudscape would would inf be informing the, the novel. And then I would use my imagination, I, I, and that's that's mm. on the sides of that. So I had those wonderful things to help, those prompts. Sure. Um, but I think I believe Nick that if I didn't have that freedom to drive up occasionally, wouldn't you just um, have to work a little bit harder? Because as long as you do a good enough job with the words, you don't, isn't it, okay, you choose your mountain and you, you imbue it with, with life and character. Some people could see the mountain a thousand times and know it much better than I and have walked it all of their lives but wouldn't have the skills. No. That's, that's and another right a fool. May, may see it once or never. It's not about how beautiful it is, that, the thing that you're seeing, surely. It's about how clear you are in your imagining. And so if you didn't get to, you know, sure, it inform, you know, I would, it, inf it informed, it, inf it, it made the experience definitely very pleasurable. But if I never got to see it, wouldn't it just be um, my task be to be consistent, to decide what my, my mountain is and fictionalise my mountain and then devote myself to it? And, and you're absolutely right. And that is, that is, that is the... the that is the beauty of, of writing. That is what writing is for. You're absolutely right. It's yeah. about communicating. And I remember reading somewhere, and I can't remember where or hearing, um, somebody once said that if the um, if NASA had sent up uh, a writer with one of the Apollo missions and not just astronauts, they wouldn't have stopped the program because the way they would have written about it would have just... Um, it would have just uh, made it just captured everyone's imagination so much they wouldn't have been allowed to stop it. Whereas you get astronauts come down and they go, "How was it up there?" You go, it was dark. It was amazing. It was wonderful. Yeah. Uh, you know, I found God, and that's about the extent of it. You send yeah. a writer up there, and the way that they would express it, NASA wouldn't be allowed to stop it because it would have captured everyone's imagination so much. Now, whether that's true or not, but I, I remember thinking, "My God, that's wow. so true. That's the power yeah. of writing to be able to have that." Um, ability to communicate something in, in such a way. 
Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's committing yourself to the to doing sure. the, the work of the imagination. Sure, sure. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that's what it is. So you know, I, I may have never seen a lavender sky over the Grampians, and yet I might describe it, and people yeah. say lavender, you know, yeah. or the mountain looking purple. I mean, it did look, it did appear purple, but you could read a little, a few accounts, or you can make it up. Sure. Of course, and absolutely. as long as you play with color, a absolutely balanced. Yeah. Way you use the letters L and V and R in the word lavender yeah. in just the right place yeah. that we we need that music of the word lavender coupled with the, the color puts in the color it tells. That's what matters, isn't it? I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely, one hundred percent. Or could we argue that you know I lived in Altona when I wrote Eye of the Sheep, and Altona was yeah. a huge part. Of that story, and I wouldn't have seen that refinery, and I wouldn't have known about the, the wetlands yeah. and those sort of half polluted flat beaches with the pilot lights and the pelicans, and I wouldn't have known. That's true, but then by the same token, as you say, someone who's lived there fifty years longer wouldn't yeah. have been able to communicate it. Yeah. yeah. So it doesn't matter where you live; it's, yeah. it's the eyes through which you're seeing. Yeah, yeah. And the now, choices that you're, you, you know, what what you're choosing to describe. Mm. Mm. Next question. I, I I don't want to give away any spoilers, yeah. uh, but there's aspects of infinite splendors that that are obviously disturbing, and I'm wondering how you, as Sophie, look after yourself when you spend hours immersed in in the head of of a person. By writing infinite splendors. Yeah, but that is that is how I'm looking. That's after. how you do. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, da, well, I know. I know. I'm totally. Being... I'm just wondering. Like, you put it down. You put the writing down. You've been in the head of a of a perpetrator or a victim for yeah. for eight hours writing or whatever it is, and then yeah. you go and make dinner. Is that that's the end of it? It goes out of your mind, no, no, or it's by it's by I, by going in there. Never eight hours. Two or three. No, I, 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 <laughs> I was, I was, I was I wondering know, if you'd I, pick up on that. I was wondering if you'd pick up on that. I know I'm being, um, you know, what's the word? I'm being a little bit, um, I'm being, being, being playful or, or am no, I no, being no. a bit confrontational by saying, you no, know, no. That, that is how. It, it is by going in there for three hours and inhabiting those worlds that I can then more cheerfully cook the dinner. Okay. Cool. Yeah, uh, 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 because otherwise I'm going to have to live with myself without having done it, and um, okay. it, it's, it's all better out that than makes in. Makes sense. Yeah, no, no, that's it's all better out than in, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. You know, so like, um, um, if you've got like an active imagination, if you've got an active imagination, mm. even an overactive one, and and, and you're anxious. You know, you have a tendency towards anxiety, and and um, and coupled with an active imagination, um, then you know, and, and the tendency to turn everything into a narrative, you know, complete with, you know, terrible, <laughs> uh, you know, terrible events and climaxes all over the place, and great losses and terrible grief. Well, you're better off putting it in the book. Yeah, that's you know? true. That's true. That's true. Merchant. And, and you'll find you've still got some friends left if you do that. <laughs> um, exactly. 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 So, so it helps. Yeah. And also, I don't find what other people perceive as uncomfortable or difficult, oddly to me, is kind of is soothing. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. You know, I, I wouldn't do do it. It, it. it holds me in a world. It's it's like having a double life, running alongside all of the ordinary life, you know, getting the car serviced, making the kids lunches, walking the dog. It's like having a very rich, urgent, dangerous yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, world with people that you, you just get to know so much about them. Everything from Mrs. Barry to the straw man, to the vegetable garden, to uncle coming, all their history. It's going on. It's all going on. And it's going on in your head. So, it's it's a good way to live. I I I I yeah 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 yeah. You, um, okay, let's turn let, let 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 let's end by turning from from Sophie the writer to Sophie the reader. Do you have a a favorite classic or maybe favorite's not the right word? A, a really memorable classic. A memorable novel? Classic. Yes. I mean, can we call a month in the country by J. L. Carr a classic? Yes. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm uh, entitled to call it a, a classic. Wasn't it written? A in modern classic. We'll call it a modern classic. Modern a month, classic. A month yeah, in the country. Right. Yeah, modern absolutely. Classic. Okay. So why? Why? What is it about that book that stands out so much? I remember, um, you know, uh, uh, being deeply um, impressed by, by the book um, because it captured. I remember at the time um, the fleeting nature of 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 um, special times, how oh, I'm not going to do a great job. I'm not going to do a great job at articulating, articulating what, what was it? The character um, had returned from the war and was given an opportunity, wasn't he, Nick, to uh, reveal mosaics oh. in, 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 a crumb, in, in a church. Oh, a once in a lifetime job for that. A once in a lifetime yeah. job. Yeah. And it removed him, uh, the, the way these opportunities sometimes happen in our lives, yeah. either through travel or, or a work opportunity, or we move away for a period of time, we step out of the, 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 the trajectory that we've been on, a time out of times. And J.L. Carr found the words to describe how sweet and potent and passing that time was, romantic, Evocative, very beautiful in, in, in that, that world. That the setting was very beautiful. Um, very, and, and, I, and I felt all of that coming off the pages. I felt terrible longing for the hero of the story. I felt love that wasn't expressed. I felt the pain of that. I felt the pain of, you know, love that really would have no place in the future. Yeah, the pain of that. Like in that film, Brief Encounter, something like that, yeah. that classic old film. Yeah. Were they destined? Could there have been a place for them? Mm -hmm. I, I felt it. I felt the feelings of, the, the, of that story. Um, crisply written, no, 20,000 words long, short, a novella almost. So short. Um, I it doesn't surprise me. How did, I, how did I do it remembering or describing? Yeah, you no, know, absolutely, really, really well. But it doesn't surprise me that you chose that one because um, because he does what you do so well. It's 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 the setting, yeah. it's, it's time, getting the time right, exactly as I said before, yeah. you do the setting, you do the time. Yeah. And also, as you were talking, another thing is that yeah. in, in your novels, as well as in The Month in the Country, um, there's a slowness to life. That's a similarity with yours, yeah. There's this, but but still conflict everywhere. Little bits of conflict. It's, most of it's in his mind, but there's always conflict. There's yeah. nothing goes exactly according mm. to plan, but it's just little things. But the pace of life and the story is, is slow, yeah. but not in a bad way. Like you know, there's so much happening. It's yeah. so it's so character driven as yours are. Or the yeah. right. Um, it's about relationships, isn't it, for him? It is so much about relationships. Yeah, yeah, and yours. I mean, as, as funny as I was reading, I was trying to work out when I was reading um, Infinite Splendors, I was trying to work out if I could come up with a theme for it. And it started in my mind, I thought, this is a book about secrets. There were so many secrets. And yeah, I thought, power of secrets. Secrets, power. But then it changed halfway to stop being about secrets. You but, did. Totally. But the first half of it was like that. And secrets is all about um, relationship, what you tell people, what you don't tell people. Yeah. Uh, and about character, so there, there's a, so it doesn't surprise me you, cho you chose a month in the country because there are great similarities. And he he, di he didn't go back, did he? He couldn't go back. No, the, the last the last few lines no. are astonishing, like super and astonishing. Um, one of the most almost one of the most astonishing endings of a book I've ever come across in a very understated way. Yeah, you know, um, beautiful. Yeah, it hurt. I remember the book. Had a quality of it was a pain around it, it hurt. Yeah, yes. It couldn't be held onto, and it would have been so beautiful and so special. And you know, from the moment he gets off the train at the very beginning, and you know from the title, a month in the country. Yeah. Boy, this is going to be some month. I mean, it's just, but it's not in terms of it's like yours. It's not in terms of huge events. It's not bombs going off, but it's all about. It's it, it's yeah. so much about that book. It's also about the past, his past, yeah. the past yeah. of the painting, yeah. all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it is infinite splendors. You know, talk about secrets, mm. the legacy of secrets, or right. the legacy of history. But I think essentially, can we say it's about um, resilience 
and our capacity um, to survive through cr creative impulse or yeah we can be redeemed yeah. through art or um we we yeah. can yeah. we can yeah the human spirit yeah i mean obviously in, in infinite splendors splendors uh and again for those that haven't read it you know the really about two brothers i guess and there's obviously other main yeah. characters um and I don't want to give too much away, but but the change in the characters, I, I I haven't, I can't remember. I'm sure I've read books where there's such dramatic changes in the two of them, but yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, and then that and that was unlike stuff you'd done before, like the other stuff. There's not change anywhere near to that extent. I mean, that, it was just and and both of them, it's almost like they were going one's yeah. here, one's here, and then they cross and they go like that. It was yeah. like in the four minute X. It was amazing yeah yeah there was a lot of pain around that you know that was sad wasn't oh, it oh my god so sad <laughs> so sad yeah look i'm giggling now but um oh. yeah well, i wanted to show the divisive um nature i suppose of that kind of yeah what it does to families yeah. and, networks and yeah. communities and how much is um the the what is it the ripple the yeah. ripples yeah, of, of, of that kind of um, when boundaries like that are crossed in that kind of way, in a violent way. Mm -hmm. But also um, that regardless of that, he then goes on, the individual who suffers goes on to spend the rest of his life um, recording, describing and attempting to understand light. That's what he does. So that's the human yeah. spirit. And, and the, yeah, right. absolutely. But then the, the other thing I've got, uh, the, the conflicting thing as yeah. a reader uh, is having um, sympathy for a character at the same yeah. time. Yeah. I, won't, I won't go far as revulsion. No. But yeah. both, you know what you know what I mean? And, and I haven't had that feeling since um, a few years ago where I read Lolita and I found myself going, what a great character. And then yeah. There's that revulsion now. It's not obviously the revulsions of the same extent, yeah, but, yeah, no, but, then sympathy, but it's like, no, yeah, oh my god, it was, it was, yeah, yeah. Because you see, when I'm writing, I didn't have that, so it, it's yeah. you know, poor readers have had to put the book down and their hearts are pal you know, palpitating yeah. hearts and breaking out in sweats and throwing <laughs> the wall and yeah. picking it up again. and you know, but you know, asking, did you know you were pushing us in that way? <laughs> did you know, did you not care for the reader? Yeah, and I didn't even really think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you didn't because it was a, it's amazing, <laughs> and and your stuff always is. And I can't wait for the next one. I could talk to you for hours and hours. Oh, thanks, Nick. We're, we're, we're coming great. to we're going to come to an end and wrap it up. For anyone out there who hasn't read Sophie's any of Sophie's works, please go and do so. You're 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 in for a treat, and 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 keep reading Sophie. Um, and thank you so much for giving us a bit of your your, your knowledge and, and 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 views on on the craft of writing. I'm, I'm still not sure we know any better how you write, uh, yeah. but we certainly got into your mind and learned some fantastic things. So thank you so much. Oh, thanks, Nick. It's been absolutely fantastic to see you again and to yeah. speak. Great.